Hello and thanks for joining me. If you've clicked on this video, I'm going to assume that you're ready to chat for a few minutes about Madama Butterfly by Giacomo Puccini, which is an opera that I recently had the opportunity to see performed live. Um, so let's spend a few minutes with Madama Butterfly. I saw a performance by Virginia Opera out at um, the George Mason University Center for the Performing Arts in Fairfax, Virginia. I saw a performance on March 23rd, 2019, and there is my ticket. So yeah, let me just pull up the cast real quick. I won't read through the whole cast, but there it is. You put the video on pause if you want to see the entire cast. The director, I mean the conductor for this uh, performance was Adam Turner, and the director was Richard Gammon. Uh, Danielle Paston sung Cha Cha San. Our Pinkerton was Matthew Vickers, and Suzuki was Kristen Choi. That's the main kind of cast, but there are others, so there's the rest of the cast if you want to see it. So, yeah, this this opera is in Italian, and the libretto was uh, done by Luigi Illica, I hope I pronounced that somewhat right, and Giuseppe Giacosa. So, yeah, and the opera had its premiere back in 1904 in Milan, from what I could tell reading up on it. It was not a success, but of course, since then, it's a blockbuster opera that's still performed very frequently today, and from what I was reading up on it, it apparently is a number six in the number of performances uh, worldwide it ranks number six so it's still very popular opera and you know it touches some really universal themes which i will touch uh, on here a, a, in a bit and then later on in the video but yeah so um i was interested also when i was reading up on the video to learn that it's based on a short story called madam butterfly published in 1898 by john luther long and this short story was in turn apparently inspired by stories Stories that the author's sister told him based on a French novel called Madame Chrysanthemum um, and by Pierre Lotti, which was published in 1887, um, which I think is really cool how, you know, I always think it's really cool to, to learn how one creative endeavor can lead to another creative endeavor that can lead to then another creative endeavor like this opera, this really beautiful opera that sort of came out of these other two works. So I think that was, you know, really cool. And one thing I wanted to say about this opera, this is the second time I've seen this opera performed live. I saw this uh, performed by Washington National Opera, and it's one of the few operas, or if not the only opera, that I have not chatted. I did not chat it for a variety of reasons, um, you know, because I already had my channel. Uh, so this is the first time I'm actually doing a uh, opera chat on this opera, um, even though it is the second time I've seen it performed live. And actually, this opera is kind of the one that started it all for me. Back when I was living in Arkansas in around 2007, 2008, I didn't grow up with opera at all. I didn't know anything about opera. And I went to, a friend of mine was interested to go, the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra was doing Doing a performance and they were going to do some concert you know um, performances of from Madame Butterfly and so I went to that with my friend my friend sort of drug me along to that and it was the first time I'd ever really heard the opera and you know seen the subtitles so I could tell what was you know going on and then there's this soprano aria in this opera which I will link to a really beautiful um, uh, performance of it from YouTube that I found that has the English subtitles and it's called um, Un bel di vedremo, which means one fine day we'll see. Um, and so it's all about this, the, uh, the main character, Butterfly, is waiting on her um, husband to return from the United States. And so she's seeing this aria. And th that really hooked me into, op to, into opera. And so since then, I have just sort of been on this opera journey and learning more and more about opera and have really come to appreciate, you know, just what a beautiful art form it is. But anyway, I digress. Let's get on to talking about, specifically about Madama Butterfly. So the quick version of the synopsis. So it's in Japan, Nagasaki, Japan, in around 1904, 1903, 1904, very early 20th century, and there is an American sailor whose name is Pinkerton, and he's arranged to marry a, a young Japanese girl, um, you know, and there's a difference, you know, we know, we figure out right away that Pinkerton is not a very nice guy, I guess, from our standards for today, he is, he is 
really just going to, he considers this marriage temporary for while he's in Japan, and then he'll go get a real wife then whenever he returns to the U.S. Of course, you know, Butterfly doesn't know anything about this. She thinks he's the real deal, so she goes, you know, sort of uh, full into this marriage and loves him, you know, really passionately. And she gives up her religion, even gets ostracized by her relatives because she wants to take his religion and make her house, you know, hold into an American household. And so she's just uh, really jumps in um, head first into the marriage. So and then, but he ends up leaving because he has to go back to the U.S. You know, she thinks he's going to return to her. In the interim time, I think like three years have passed or something, she has a child, which he doesn't know anything about. And so she's really waiting on him to come back. And so that's what this aria is, you know, that I mentioned, Umbeldi Bedremo, where she's just, you know, one fine day, we're going to see his ship come in the harbor and everything, he's going to come back to me. And so she sings this to her, her maid, uh, Suzuki, who, uh, you know, by this point is already figured out, you know, he's not going to come back. Well, you know, so because foreign men typically don't come back to, to their wives there, you know, we, we learned from Suzuki. So uh, Butterfly gets offered from a marriage broker. She gets offered to marry another guy. She just will have none of it because she's just so, has so much faith in her husband. You know, this is misplaced faith. You know, we as the audience already can tell based on, um, on Pinkerton's earlier uh, behavior and, and words, what he said. Um, so anyway, he does eventually come back, but he brings his American wife with him, and they want they figure they find out that that um, Butterfly has a child, and they want to take the child back to the United States with them. So the opera sort of culminates then in the end with. Um, a butterfly realizes at the very, you know, sort of realizes she has to realize at this point that he is, he doesn't love her, that it, everyone else was right. And in order to what she feels is to save her honor, she, she commits suicide. So, and lets them take, take her child with her. So it's a, it's just a terrible tragedy. Um, you know, and it's just Pinkerton is just everyone hated him. You know, I think in this performance that I saw, he sang the role really well. But I think because everybody hates him so much, he got a few boos whenever he came up for his curtain call. But I don't think that was really for his performance so much. Maybe he performed it a little too well because we, uh, the audience really, you know, doesn't like Pinkerton because, um, you know, um, uh, She's a uh, butterfly, is such sort of an innocent, naive love, you know, that's just so uh, full and loyal and unquestioning. And he's the opposite of that. So I think that is, um, you know, it tells a really beautiful story and some really beautiful music and some very mu beautiful singing, but it's a very tragic story. So I'm going to link below. There is an English, uh, there is a production of this that is really, really beautiful. Um, and the soprano is Ying Huang and she sings Un Bel Di Bedremo very, very beautifully. I'm going to link to that down below. There's also um, this humming chorus in the opera that, you know, I was, I was hearing it and I was like, where have I heard that before? Where have I heard that before? And <laughs> it's from Le Mis, uh, Le Mis Rubly, you know, the, the Broadway play. The uh, song Bring Him Home is, it has a, a sort of a similar sound and I read up on it a little bit and apparently, you know, the composers of Le, composer of Le Mis was heavily influenced by Puccini and you can really tell it in those two uh in those two um those two songs i will link to those also down in the comments below so yeah before i run out of time um one thing i wanted to say about the opera so the opera you know why is it so popular today um still you know and i think it's because it's it's really universal of this universal story of one person who doesn't love enough uh, you know, doesn't give enough in love, that's Pinkerton, and then one person who gives too much, you know, so it's possible to not have enough faith in love, and it's possible to have too much faith in love, apparently, uh, or at least it worked out that way for uh, Butterfly. So I think it's just an enduring uh, story because everyone can relate to it about love and um, 
the dangers of love, dangers of not loving enough and the dangers of loving too much. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so uh, the director here, Richard uh, Gammon, ha made a, made a, uh, has a, a thing in the program here that I thought was really interesting too because this piece is, this opera is, um, you know, sometimes it can be a little controversial because we're dealing with some kind of politically and socially sensitive subjects where, um, you know, it's racial, uh, this exoticism of, of fetishiz fetishizing maybe the East. And so um, the director here has a nice little uh, thing he wrote about that. So I just thought I would just read that before I run out of time. And the director, Richard Gammon, says, I find this piece fascinating. The universal themes of love, honor, and sacrifice are rewarding to explore, but we must also confront the problems inherent in presenting this opera today. This opera can be treated as a museum piece, one that is deserving of presentation, but viewed at arm's length, to be looked at and discussed, although more for its beauty than anything else. But having the conversations about race and racial superiority, exoticism, gender roles, and suicide, while extremely difficult, are also very necessary in our continuing evolution as a society and human beings. Equally important are dis the discussions that arise outside of the text and music and born and more out of the politics and mechanics of producing this opera. Topics such as colorblind versus color conscious casting or how to present Japanese characters with a multiracial cast accurately but sensitively, especially when employing a color conscious process. I sincerely believe it is important for people of color to have a place at the table. The perspective of an Asian American director will inevitably differ from those without that personal history, and it is imperative to be given the opportunity to tell our stories from our point of view. So yeah, you know, I've heard this opera criticized before because of non-Japanese uh, women especially playing butterfly you know and, and sort of having the makeup to make them look more Japanese and um, you know so that's uh, one aspect and then the other is just sort of trying to present it um, sort of as a modern piece this particular production um, was set in that era of Japan. So it was really more of a traditional production. I think nowadays the opera is produced in all sorts of forms and not necessarily in 1904 Japan, but um, this particular performance was. So before I run out of time, I just thought I would read an, uh, something that Adam Turner, the, the artistic director and the conductor for the opera, um, wrote about the uh, what, what Puccini said the, the opening night for this opera. Puccini said, It was a real lynching. Those cannibals didn't listen to one note. What a horrible orgy of madmen drunk with hate. But my butterfly will not die. It is the most deeply felt and imaginative opera I have yet conceived. I know that I have written a genuine living opera and that it will certainly rise again. So yeah, 115 years later, it's still out there um, bringing beauty to the audiences that hear it. And so thank you, Puccini, for sticking with uh, Madame Butterfly. Your critics, when it, when it premiered, were proven wrong. Uh, yeah, so with that, I think I will leave this opera chat. I am behind a book chat. I'm behind another opera chat. And I have an opera composer's book tag coming up that's been sort of circulating around on BookTube. And I was tagged for that. Uh, tagged by Richardson Reads, Mark over at Richardson Reads. So I will get a response up to the Opera Composer's book tag very soon. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, take care. Bye.